Let's continue our deep dive into sketch mode and into sketcher geometry. In this video, we'll take a look at creating ellipses, fillets, chamfers, and splines. And I'm in sketch mode. I'm sketching on the datum plane front. And I've already turned off my dimension display and constraints display so that they don't clutter up my graphics area. So first off, for creating an ellipse, there is a drop down, and you can either define the axis ends or the center and axis. Let's first take a look at axis ends, and I'll start with one point, and then you can make the next point either horizontal, vertical, or at some angle, and you'll left click again, and then you can drag out the width to whatever major and minor axis that you want. So that is the first method. With the second method of creating the ellipse, you have the center and axis ellipse. So you'll locate the center of the ellipse, and then you can see, hopefully in the graphics area, that as I'm moving my mouse out, the other end is extending as well, because this represents the major or minor radius. And let's left click again, and just like before, you can drag out your mouse, depending on what you want for the minor or major axis, and then left click, and you have your other ellipse created. Let's take a look at the fillets, and I'm going to zoom in on these rectangles that I already have created. If you go to the drop down for the fillet, there are four different types that you can create circular, circular trim, elliptical, and elliptical trim. If you're using an older version of Creo Parametric, I forget when they added it, but uh, you would only have two options in older, older versions circular or elliptical. Let's take a look in order. First off, with circular. I'm going to left click on one line and then left click on another line. And there we get our circular fillet placed in here. And you might be able to see that we have some construction lines and a construction point located at the former vertex. And that was something that was added a few versions ago for the standard circular fillet. Let's take a look at circular trim over on the other side of the rectangle. Again, I'll go to the fillet drop down and then circular trim. Left click on two entities. And by the way, they don't have to be at a right angle to each other. And there we get our circular fillet in there. And when you use the regular circular trim, you don't get that construction geometry in here. And the reason that they added the construction geometry is that sometimes you put in the fillet and you need to dimension to the theoretical vertex that is there. And so people would have to go to the point command and then let it snap to the intersection of both lines. But by having the construction geometry, it saves you from having to do that. And then you could create dimensions to the construction geometry as opposed to that point that you create at the theoretical vertex. Besides the circular options, you have elliptical options. They're pretty much the same, except instead of getting a circle, you get an ellipse. And so we'll click elliptical and then left click. And I'm going to left click over here to make it exaggerated and so there you see that we have an ellipse created in here and we've got construction geometry for dimensioning the minor and major axes and we have our construction geometry in here in case you needed to dimension to the extent of the original geometry let's go to the fillet drop down and go to elliptical trim and it does the same as before except you don't get the construction geometry over where the original entities were. You do get the construction lines for the minor and major axes, but not the geometry over here. Now let's take a look at the chamfer. And when you go to create the chamfer, there are two different options. You have the chamfer and the chamfer trim. And just like we saw with the fillets, with the regular chamfer, pick two entities. They don't have to be at a 90 degree angle. And with this option, you get the construction geometry for dimensioning. If you go to the chamfer trim command, well, pick your two entities. And in this case, you get the chamfer, but you do not get the construction geometry. All right, for our last one in this video, we'll take a look at the spline. 
and you can actually do many videos on splines but we'll cover as much as we can in this video to create a spline click on the spline command there is no drop down and you're going to use a bunch of left mouse clicks in order to define the shape of your geometry this is an example of an open spline but you can also sketch a closed spline just by making sure that the first and last points are co-located and it'll snap to it and there we have our closed spline let's take a look at editing the spline so I'm going to go back to my first one over here if you double click on the spline that allow you to edit it and you will notice that we get a dashboard on the screen and the first thing is that you can add and delete points you can select a point right mouse click on it and choose delete point and the spline will adjust but if you want to add in another point just right click add a location and choose add point and then you can use that to manipulate the shape of the feature going to the dashboard there are two different controls that allow you to modify this using a control polygon and control points as opposed to using the interpolation points that define the spline so for example here we can go and grab the control polygon the different points on there and that way you can change the shape of the spline in this way sort of more like a traditional B spline uh, method of manipulation and again this button on here allows you to toggle that mode on and off this button over here essentially does the same thing you can toggle between interpolation or control points the next button on the dashboard allows you to display the curvature of the spline and curvature is defined as one over the radius at every point along here you have a slider bar and an entry field where you can change the scale and sometimes you want to exaggerate the scale to see how smooth your spline is and the next slider and entry field is for the density and by increasing the density that's increasing the number of points along the spline at which it's calculating the different values and if it gets too cluttered you can roll it down the other way so that you can see the shape as you're working on the spline you can see okay if I grab this oh yeah maybe it's making the curvature a little bit better oh this point over here let's adjust it and that way you can get sort of a, a more aesthetic feel for the shape of your feature let's take a look at the different tabs for modifying the spline first off we'll take a look at the point tab and first off you have different points on here and it'll give you the XY locations and right now those XY locations are being defined relative to the sketch origin let me select a different point over here so these are the XY coordinates relative to the origin of that point select another point and the values change in case you need to know what those XY values are or you could change to explicit XY values inside of here now I'm going to hit the check mark to get out of here for a moment and I'm going to drop in a sketcher coordinate system now I'm going to locate it at the origin of our spline and now when I double click on the spline and go to the point tab I could use a local coordinate system and then click the pick icon to select that sketcher coordinate system that I just created and now when I select different points in here the XY locations are being given to relative to that coordinate system as opposed to the origin and that way I could control and say hey you know what maybe I want the Y value for this point to be zero in line with the origin next before I go to the fit tab I'm going to take a look over on the file tab and the file tab I've shown this in other videos you could use it to open up a text file that ends with a .pts extension and it's really just a tab delimited XYZ data and even though the spline is only two dimensional you do have to have the Z column in there and if you have any non-zero values for Z it's going to change them back to zero and so for reading in a file you need a reference coordinate system and your file can either be in Cartesian coordinates or polar coordinates I'm going to leave the default radio button for Cartesian let's select the reference coordinate system and then you can click the open button and I'm gonna grab one of my points in here 
And I get an error message saying that, hey, the file that you're trying to read in contains a different number of points. Do you want to continue? In this play case, I'm going to choose yes. And my spline is really, really small. So I'm going to zoom in on over here. So now you see the new spline. If I click on the information button, we can see the X, Y, Z coordinates of this particular spline. From this dialog box, you could save this information window out to a text file. Also, if I close this, you have this save button here that allows you to save those coordinates out to a creoparametric.pts file, which again, is just a text file, and you can change the name of it in here. Let's cancel out of here. The last thing to talk about for the spline is adjusting the shape. So sometimes you'll have XYZ data and it might contain some noise, especially if you're getting it from coordinate measuring machines or some other kind of test values or simulation values. So the fit tab allows you to smooth out the value. In this case here, my curve is pretty smooth, but the two different ways of smoothing it out is by using a deviation value, value between zero and one. And based on this data, I happen to know that I want to use a very, very small deviation value. Otherwise, it'll just give me a flat line. And so when I hit the enter key, you can see that it reduced the number of points and made it marginally smoother. Let me go back to the file tab and I'm going to read in the original data just to get back to where I was before. And opposed to using that sparse deviation value, you could smooth it out using points. And what it'll do is you specify an odd number of points, three, five, seven, nine, whatever, depending on your data. And it'll sort of average out that number of points. And so let's change this to say value of five, hit the enter key, and you see it got a little flatter by averaging out the point data. And then when you're happy with modifying your spline, you hit the check mark, and that way you have your new geometry. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.